I was the mombie. Have you heard of that phrase? <laughs> I've, I've not heard of that. <laughs> it's like a zombie mom. Whenever some of the parents talk about holidays, there's always just like fear. It is probably the one I hear it from the most, where it's just like, <laughs> holidays are coming up. Not just holidays, weekends. <laughs> weekends and holidays. When the kids are at home, you have to be a bit more cued in. You can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to pop out now because you've got like my seven-year-old going to be screaming, being like, I want, like, I'm hungry. <laughs> Summer holidays, my trick is they have to come exercise with me. So my two-year-old will go for the runs with me and my older son will go on the bike next to me. Charlie or Millicent. I know. If I put a load of veg on his plate, him and all his mates at nursery all kind of bonded together over their hatred of peas. This past weekend, I fell asleep at one and everyone was like, oh, he's a, he's a new dad. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said to her, oh, let him sleep. You know, he probably needs it. And I'm saying, okay, she needs it way more than I do. After I had my first child, like I put on so much weight. And then when you have kids, everything just went pear-shaped, literally. Mm. <laughs> if I'm doing a workout and he catches me in the evening, he'll ask to join in when I've caught him in his room and he's doing bicep curls and he's oh, no falling way. away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you can fix your relationship with food, you can get a structure in your day, control your time, control your emotions. This isn't going to get easier, so don't wait for this easy time to happen. Because whether it's kids, work, or it's health, or family, or holidays, there's never going to be this perfect time. Okay, so uh, today's podcast is something a little bit different. Uh, we had a few people in the community mention uh, they'd love to hear about what the RNT, parents on the RNT team how they personally juggle nutrition, training, and living a healthy and fit lifestyle. So what we've got here today is we've got two mums, two dads on the team, <laughs> uh, one new dad, uh, well, three more experienced. And uh, what we can, what, would, what I thought would be interesting is just sharing our own personal experiences of how we personally have different approaches to training, nutrition, steps, uh, and living a healthy and fit lifestyle. And hopefully there's some nuggets that, that, people can take away from from the episode and and try out and, and apply into their own lives so to start off with the the big concern that people have is time like how do we fit this all in how do you fit in the training the nutrition the meal prep the steps the walks the runs all these bits how do you fit it into the day when you've got uh, a young child relying on you so start with the mums <laughs> uh, we've got charlie here and we've got shweta uh how do you fit in <laughs> It's a juggling act, isn't it? So I've got two children, um, differing age, one's 12, one's two. Um, so there's different challenges that I have all the time when it comes to uh, managing my time. I think the key thing for me is communicating with my husband and making sure that he's aware what I want and I'm aware of what he wants so that we can align in that. And I think that is the biggest thing that has meant that we can go from a family of two to three to four and still be able to fit in a good diet, good routine with our exercise that we both get to do it. And it's not one and not the other person. So I think that's the key thing that we found has worked is each day knowing what the other one needs to do and wants to do. And what does that conversation look like? Um, so we, we do it at the beginning of the week. So it's usually on a Sunday. We talk about, is there anything different that's going on this week? Is there anything that's not the norm of our usual daily or weekly plan? Um, and then we do it every night. So usually about eight o'clock, once the kids are in bed, it's a check-in of I'm doing this run, I'm doing this, you're doing this, and I'm doing that. So that's kind of the daily side of it. Um, there's a bigger goal. So like I've done two marathons in the last six months, and that's taken a massive, massive chunk of both of our times because my training runs have been up to three hours long so that's not just your normal half an hour 45 minutes needing to do a workout so before I committed to those I needed my husband Kev to be on board and to be able to give me that extra time um so I've I've taken the lion's share of the training time recently because <laughs> mine have always been more demanding. But it's also meant that I've gone out for my training runs at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, really? um, yeah. So I've got up and gone at four o'clock in the summer only. I haven't done that in the winter. It doesn't seem as appealing. Um, but it's meant that it's been that juggle. But on a day-to-day -day -day basis, it's a conversation around eight o'clock. I'm going to go for a run. Come back. You're going to go for a run. You do breakfast. I'll do this. You do nursery run. I'll mm. do that then work and then come back and then work out the evening slot. Um, I generally take the morning slot of exercise and he usually takes the afternoon evening slot. So that's how it works. For so us. there are always like windows in the day where there's potential for exercise. Yeah. Oh, every, we've all yeah. got a window. We've yeah. all got a window. It becomes harder when you need a three hour window. Um, yeah. It's been much easier since I'm not doing marathon training to be able to fit in an hour for that exercise. But I think everybody's got 
that window. It's just whether or not you've chosen to make that a window for you to do. I don't personally watch TV. So I think I gain extra windows because I'm not watching TV. Shut when the te- television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a television, but yeah. I don't watch it. I don't. And yeah, so I think that gains me a bit of time. Yeah, fair. What about you, Shredder? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it just both Parth and I, we both have, we're both really intense about exercising. We have like our set routine, but in the same way, like similar to Charlie, I take the morning slot because I'm just a morning person. I just naturally just get up really early and I find it just really much easier to just get out of the house, like half past five to go for my runs or go to the gym or whatever, just get it out of the way. And he um, goes in in the evenings. So we try and get our steps together. So if we have, so it's kind of a nice way to just, we're walking and we're talking, we're planning the week and we're figuring out what's happening with the kids and what's happening with us. And if there's anything, you know, different or out of the ordinary, then we take the time while we go for our steps to actually talk about that. And that's a really nice way. So both of us are like, you know, we get some fresh air, we actually get to connect. And um, on the weekends or with summer holidays coming up, when the kids are at home, it's a bit more tricky because we tend to get it in when the kids are in school. Uh, but we've got six weeks of the kids are pretty much in the house the entire time. So then that's a bit more, that's a bit harder. So we have to be a bit more like cued in. You can't, I can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to pop out now because you've got like my seven-year-old going to be screaming, being like, I want, like I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I make mine come with me. So yeah, in the exactly. summer holidays, that's my trick is they have to come exercise with me. So I have a running buggy. So my two-year-old will come and go for the runs with me and my older son will go on the bike next to me. Charlie, you're militant. I know. I'm literally like, no, you're coming with me. That's it. No I'll TV, do shorter no ones. No TV, exercises during the holidays. I know. <laughs> but he enjoys it. So um, my my son, who's 12, so he asks to get his friends around to come and come exercise. So he uh, gets nice. them around to come and do it with us. So it's, a, it's become more of a fun thing. I, it's yeah. not militant. Yeah. Well, just for context, uh, so how old are your children? Uh, so 12 and two. Shredder? 11 and 7. And then Ed? Uh, I've got a three-year-old son and then my daughter's about three months now. Okay, so there's a good range of um, ages here. And the reason I ask is just so people can apply context where where necessary. Yeah. Um, When it comes to summer holidays, because it might be quite timely for for those who have kids in summer, how, how is that... How does that balance work? Because whenever some of the parents talk about holidays, there's always this like fear. Yeah. That enters their mind. I mean, Ed, Ed is probably the one I hear it from the most, but it's just like holidays are coming up. Not just holidays, weekends. <laughs> Weekend holidays. Yeah. Like, there's this dread that comes with it. Like, what, what, what have I got to look forward to with that? And how does that pertain to health and fitness? So I think for me, it's being organized. I um, take my sisters take the mick out of me because I have a spreadsheet. So everything is planned out of what he's going to be doing for that summer holidays. Obviously, my daughter's not in school, so nothing changes for her. Um, But he is at home and we have to know where he's going to be so that he's entertained. I can work and do my exercise and everything then can fit in. So for me personally, it doesn't generally change things that much in the case that it still has to be organized and I will still fit it in I won't change it um but yeah he's from from the age of like five he's knows during the holidays he will come on a bike ride with me while I want to do my runs or he'll come in the garden and we do a workout together um and he will do most of it and he'll enjoy it Mm. um there's times when he's not in the summer holidays that if I'm doing a workout and he catches me in the evening so it's when he's around because usually it's in the morning when he's not he'll ask to join in um and I think that's that's the best thing right that's what we want our kids to do and I think it helps my it helps my mum guilt knowing that Mm. he wants to do it too and actually it's been a really good thing that since he's been born he's seen me exercise he knows it's part of my life and that it needs to be part of everyone's life and that he's then coming to me saying well can I work out with you what are you doing what did you do if I do this or when I've caught him in his room and he's doing bicep curls and he's stolen away yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so So have you ever spoken to him about exercise or has he just modelled what you've done so so, yeah, I think it's just it's more the modeling side of things. Yeah. I haven't ever haven't ever had to have that conversation of like you should do exercise. He's always it's just been a natural way of our life. Like he's always been part of the swimming club. He enjoys football. Um, he does. And I wouldn't put him in the sporty kid category either. Mm. I wouldn't say it's naturally the thing that he would I would say, oh, he's that kid that's constantly always wanted to do sport. But he he does enjoy being outside. So that's his thing if he wants to, if I do a workout outside, he'll come outside and he'll want to. And have you always been into fitness? 
Yeah. It's longer than he's been alive. You've been into fitness. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was younger, um, I was a swimmer. So I used to do a lot of swimming. So I swam. That's where disciplines come from. Yeah. 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 So I'd used to go in the morning before school, make my dad take me to the swimming pool for 6 a.m. to swim, come back, go to school, come home and then go back and do two hours of training in the evening. And then every weekend I was traveling somewhere in England doing some um, gala or competition. Um, so, yeah, it has always been part of my life. Um, he doesn't have the competitive side like I do. Um, so I think it's just nice. He just sees that I enjoy it. Yeah. And that yeah. seems to... <laughs> that seems to be the main thing and it is so rewarding when I see him say oh can I do it with you and I did a race recently and I finished the race and he f tracked me round so it was in France Mont Blanc round a mountain and he's gone round tracking me and got to the end and his face he looked so so happy and he was like but mummy I don't understand why are you not red and sweaty everyone else is falling through the finishing line you must be so fit and I was no like way. the proud moment like I could have run it all again just from that feeling of him and then the next morning woke up my legs were a little tired mummy can we go for a run so we went for a run because oh, wow. he wanted Didn't to go for that. a run. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that to me is, that's it. That's, yeah. that gets rid of all the mum guilt of all those Sunday mornings that I've been doing three hours of running. And, um, you think in your head that you're not doing the right thing for your kid, but actually you're hundred percent doing the right thing for your children mm -hmm. because they're learning a skill that, and I do think if you do exercise as, a child it becomes easier as an adult um I think that's definitely helped me I don't know if or not you were sporty as kids but I think it's definitely helped me in an adult life that that's just part of my life yeah. so I think if I can make that part of my children's life I think it will help them as an adult so I don't get mum guilt we can talk about mum guilt later but what's the interesting you've been into health and fitness all your life whether you're potentially newer to the whole uh, transformation journey and really prioritizing health and fitness. Yeah. How has it been different for you with that perspective? Yeah, it's 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 definitely not. I wasn't as fit as Charlie growing up. I mean, when I was, we're all trying to be did. as we're all trying to be as fit as Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when I was like, I completely after I had my first child, like I put on so much weight, and then um, which I never really fully lost, and then I had my second child in their their three and a half years apart. And, you know, it was just, it was just like sort of kept adding on and has just, it just felt like completely this whole identity. Like, you know, I had like major body dysmorphia, I think. I was like, of course I'm not that big. Like, you know, I was, because I was quite slim. Like I was definitely skinny fat. I wasn't somebody who was big as a young, like in my twenties or anything. I was just, I was quite slim, but I didn't really have uh, the knowledge on how to maintain that. And then when you have kids, you just sort of, everything just went pear shaped literally mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and then um there was a friend of mine who started running and she was like just come with us and then I started running and then I started you know I got into feeling a bit more I started using my mornings better and the first thing that I think I stopped doing was doing the nighttime Instagram or whatever it was no Instagram then Facebook I guess the doom scroll Scroll. yeah the scrolling <laughs> because I was like you know I was the zo I was the mommy have you heard of that phrase <laughs> I'm not, I'm not heard of that. <laughs> it's like a zombie mom because you're so like you don't have any time for yourself because your kids are with you all day long so the only time you get is a quiet time when kids are in, kids are in bed so you're really tired you just really want to get to bed but this is like everyone's away, everyone's asleep. This is so quiet. This is time, me time. And so then you end up sitting on the couch, like a bag of crisps or chocolate oh, or something. No yeah. And you're sort of scrolling, you know, just rat. Like, so that's like the phrase actually is mombi. Really? Look it up. Yeah. It. yeah. And that was like <laughs> the <laughs> classic <laughs> mombi. Sense, though, yeah. <laughs> it's because you can't be one. That's why you've not <laughs> yeah. heard of it. <laughs> it's terrible. I mean, and so it takes you to wake up completely like you know, brain fog, you're sleep deprived, your child has probably called you five times in the night because of whatever. Yeah. And so it's just, you fall into that, how big can my cup of coffee get the next morning just oh, to wow. get me through the day? It was just, so the first thing I think I did was I put my phone away. I was like, no, I just don't want to do this. And I went back to what I used to do, which was read. I used to read so much before. So then I started reading a book, not on a Kindle, like, you know, actually get a book. So which means you have to turn the light off, you know, those little <laughs> things like you just have to like actually make the steps you have to actually try. And that made such a difference because then I 
took the mornings and I was like, you know what, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and I'm going to train, I'm going to run, I'm going to take care of myself. I so think that's when the switch happened. When you before previously thought you had no time and you know, you just, when you described that scenario, you said, love, well, literally no time of the day. Yeah. The only time I do have, I'm going to sit there with a bag of chips and, and, yeah. and my phone. But then all of a sudden you, you said you did have these pockets of time that evolved. Was that by accident or was it just a different approach to the day? I think I just suddenly realized how tired I was all the time. Like I was constantly complaining I was tired. And yeah. uh, we live in a uh, place which is quite hilly. So I had like this little, this is my little one and um, my three-year-old and he was a babe in front of my seven-year-old was, was a baby. So he was in a buggy and we had to push it up this hill. And I, by the time I would get to the top of the hill to get to the shops and stuff, I'd be like out of breath and completely. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm so out of shape. It's ridiculous. So then... I don't, I never remember feeling that tired and that out of shape and that just, I guess, I guess I get, felt really down on myself at that time. And I, th I think that was like, a, I was like, I need to change something. And that's when I started running. And then I did that for like, I did my first half marathon and then I was like, oh, I like this. And then when R&T happened, it all came together and I realized that it's not just about the food. I mean, it's not just about the running. It's about the food. It's about, you know, making making sure that you're not um, snacking on the crusts of sandwiches. I, I, I know this is crazy, <laughs> but when I started, like my, my kids won't eat the borders of sandwiches. I don't know about your kids, but they won't eat the borders of sandwiches. So I'd always be like, how can I waste like this, you know, yeah, small yeah. mountain of breadcrumbs? So I would end up eating that. Like, and that would be my breakfast. I mean, it's ridiculous. No way. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's not good for you. Yeah, so I was just, yeah, suddenly I just, that was when the, the nutrition aspect came into place. And I was like, breadcrumbs can go into the bin. It's fine. So how, how do you think that's impacted children? Because your children have come newer to this only recent last two two years or three years maybe. Yeah. Whereas Charlie's children were born in this environment. So do you think it's, do you think their approach to exercise is different? Do, you, do they come... Are they there yet? Are they aware of nutrition? Or is it something that's being worked on in the household? Like um, how, because it's quite an interesting like contrast. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think I always I was always a baker and a, I always used to cook the meals. It was always I think it's like, yeah. you know, you know where's in Indian you sort of have that, you know, it has to be all freshly made at yeah. home, like nothing nothing kept like it all, never means healthy though. No, exactly. <laughs> so but I just had I mean there was always like like there were always lots of veg. There was always like it was always whole wheat. It was never white bread. It was always, you know, lots of veg and stuff like that. But we're and we're vegetarian. So it was, I guess I thought it was balanced in a way. So there was not like, they weren't like coming back home and eating Kit Kat as a snack. And they would come yeah. back home and they would have, you know, something nutritious like fruit and, you know, maybe a pot of yogurt or something like that would be after school snack instead of, you know, maybe crisps and chocolate or something. So that part of it was always there. But I think um, the snacking was like a big thing that I, that I think they have, them, they have also picked up on now. From you. Yeah, now, now oh. they've realized that, you know, actually they don't really eat in between meals, do, do they? <laughs> so there's less of that, you know, opening the, the cupboard and be like, oh, you know, just want a snack on something. That's gone now. And you now. think that was because you used to do that? I think so. Or what I would do is I'd be hungry when I was cooking the meals. And so I, I'd be making like, you know, dal and or chapatis or something, but I'd be hungry while I'm cooking. And then I'd be like eating like you half the meal when he eat. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? what was I doing? How, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even like, I wasn't even yeah, factoring yeah. that as calories that I was eating because it was just, it wasn't like food. It was just sort of bits. You were cooking. Yeah. 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 So, Unco it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. So I think that the penny dropped then. Yeah. And then I realized, mm. oh my God, it's, it's, I can't be finishing off their half-eaten plate of pasta. I can't be eating their, you know, the crusts of their sandwiches. I need to be really focusing on getting a balanced meal and making sure that the food I eat is, you know, for me and not just their um, leftovers. Mm. So Ed, what about for, as a dad, we've kind of covered like the, the fitting in aspect and a lot of it's come down to communication. Hmm. How, how have you found it different as a dad, from a dad's perspective, where potentially the demands aren't as high or well, they're definitely not as high. Yeah. Not <laughs> yeah. I think we can probably it's say that. Not potentially. <laughs> um, I think it's, it's all very similar. It's like probably just a little bit easier for me. Um, 
But I kind of just echo what, what Charlie and Shirt were saying in terms of, I mean, I don't have as many touch points with Sue's my wife in terms of redoing the schedule as you do. I think my life's a bit more baby boring. It's kind of like <laughs> we just set it and we just roll with it. Um, but say when when something does come up, it's okay that this is, you know, this is a negoti- negotiation kind of sounds like too formal, but it's just you figure out who's going to be where at what time. Um and then I think with the big fitness goals, so like, so the marathon for, for Charlie or whether you want to do a shoot or anything like that, it's just factoring that in now, whereas before when it's just you, you just think, well, sure, I'm willing to commit three hours every Saturday for my long run. But now it's like, oh, actually, how does that fit in to everything else? So I'm, I'm not the runner Charlie is, but I do a little bit. And so my long run will always have to be on a Saturday. Um, and likewise, I left the house at 4.30 last Saturday to get my long run in because... I ran for just under three hours. And so I just think, do I want to leave Sue's to look after them, the, the two kids for, you know, if I go out at 10 in the morning, mm-hmm. she's got three full hours with them, which, you know, it's, it's not the, the end of the world, but it's the tough, it's it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, whereas if I go really early, maybe it's only two hours, She's she's got both of them, she's juggling, or hopefully even one if one of them sleeps in a little bit more. So it's just trying to factor that in. And I think with kind of go back to what Shreta was saying around the the time thing, how you suddenly free up this time. It's just be more aware and conscious of your time because when you are either single or you haven't got a kid, there's so much buffer that you've got and you don't think of it as buffer because you fill it. You fill it with that, that endless scrolling or you fill it with something that's just kind of not as productive or a bit more sleep or whatever it is. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when I think when you add the kid in, if you, your time's compressed and so you have to be really aware of your priorities and if, if you want your health to be a priority and sleep to be a priority, you have to make the time. Um, and it normally means pulling away from some of those those kind of buffer periods because work's not going to go anywhere. Let's say you've got at least eight hours of your 24 is already gone. You put in eight hours of sleep, ideally. I know parents listen to this might be laughing at that, but you know, you take out of that. You then, you know, yes. you're, you're in, yeah, you've only got another eight hours of the day, which sounds like loads, but you take a bit of time out for eating, for showering, for just doing basic stuff. You've now also got to like, you know, look after the kids or whatever. It's like, you've really got to be deliberate with that time. Um, And that's where having those blocks where you are almost tag teaming is so useful. Cause yeah, you get, you get that hour at say six in the morning and then you tag it back. So then they can have it at seven in the evening or whatever it is. Um, And it means, you know, not everything is optimal, I train first thing in the morning. Ideal for me is like mid to late morning. That's when I feel best, when my training's best, but it just doesn't work with with work and the family stuff. So you, you kind of go for that slightly suboptimal, which is like an eight out of 10, but I can be consistent with that eight out of 10 rather than shooting for 10 out of 10, but not being able to you know do that on a week by week basis. So you're, so you're, um, for you, fitness has always been a top priority. So for you, it's, it's, it's more of like a finding the blocks which are already sort of there in the day, if you're completely new to this and you are having to go through a body, let's say you had a body transformation to start, but you also had this new kid or new kid in the mix as well, or at least a young kid, mm-hmm. how, how would it, how would it be any different? The approach or the time or the energy demands and where, where would you, what would you need to allocate as extra? Uh, or the way you think about it, because I think it can be a blocker for a lot of, let's say dads mm-hmm. who say, oh, I'll put this off until I've got out the first few years. Yeah. Whereas I think there is potentially more more opportunity for them. But how would you approach it? Yeah, I think I think it's just making, being really realistic with what you can commit to on like a week to week basis with within your situation and then working with your partner, if you are with a partner on how that can fit with the family. Um, and so for, for an example, if you were talking about like really young, cause I actually was dieting when my, my son came. So obviously I wasn't new to it, but, um, I had my slot where, you know, Suze was, was looking after him where I went to the gym and then I did training straight into cardio. Like some people might know it's maybe more optimal to split them apart. Maybe I'd have done that if I was a single guy, but I just went training straight into cardio. Then when I flipped back, um, you know, tagged Susan so she could have an hour to either exercise or sleep or just chill out. Um, because he was newborn, I would put him in the pram and I would do 10,000 steps in one go. And that would take, you know, an hour and a half or something. I was lucky he was like a sleeper in the pram. It would like knock him out. Um, so I could almost tick off my steps with also my 
my like dad time while Suze was having that. And so I think there's, if you can combine the two, so like, so Charlie goes for runs with her son, if you can tick two things off together, brilliant. But otherwise it's just, you've got to accept that you're just not going to be able to do things between nine and five as you might have wanted to do before. Like, I don't know a parent who works and has other elements of their life who's not up at five o'clock in the morning. You know, if you're not doing something before work and or something afterwards, like that's quite rare, I think. And so it's, no one wants to get up when the alarm goes off at four. <laughs> Noted. But it's, you know what I mean? It's like, that. say the alarm does go off at four or five, whatever it is. No one wants to do that right there and then, but it's like, okay, well, it's either now or never. Yeah. And I'd rather get up and wash mm. my face and I'm good to go than just not do it. Because that, that's literally the option. Because as soon as that, that if I, my, normally I do 5.15. If, if I don't get up at that time, it's gone. Because then I'm taking them to nursery. Then I'm going to work. Then I'm picking them up from nursery. Then we're doing routine, bedtime routine. Then I go to bed. So that there's no buffer left to pull mm. from. You either get up and do it or you accept. But, you know, you don't want to do it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All these things to look, look forward to. The thing I learned the, the, that came to me was the buffer thing. Uh, having to have a set time in the day. My time is actually 3 p.m., ironically. <laughs> okay. uh, but that may up for it elsewhere. Um, but for me, when I was trying to do the the thing I used to do in the past, which was, oh, I fancy a 10 o'clock session here, 4 o'clock this day, 7 o'clock the other day. It was just, it changed every day, depending on how I felt. Whereas now it has to be 3 p.m. Otherwise, it just, it probably just won't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, shifting back to um, mum guilt, I think... Uh, that's something that we we hear about a lot where a lot of our members come to us and they may have put on a lot of weight in the early years of their children. They tend to be, you know, the late thirties, early forties, they gain weight um, in the early years of their kids, but they never lost it. Um, and they probably gained it because something Ed said before, it's like they, they almost like smarted them for their own health, that they put everything um, first. Speaking to those moms specifically, what, how can you help them alleviate that guilt and channel it towards themselves so that they can start their health and journey when it's it's potentially something completely different. I think for me, it's been now having an older child and seeing the return that it's giving me of him wanting to be healthy and saying, oh, mommy, I'm a bit hungry. What can I have? And I'm like, okay, well, are you hungry or do you just want a snack? And he knows that awareness of what he wants for his body. And he'll often say to me, but is that healthy? Um, Is what I'm choosing healthy? And he's trying to learn those things. And like I said earlier, when I finished a race and he then wants to go and do exercise as well, all those little things urges me to make sure that every mum doesn't get guilty about doing something for them as well because I know I'm a better mum when I've done my Mm. exercise I know that I'm happier I know that I'm healthier I know that I'm not always trying to um, do everything else really quickly because I want to go and do my exercise. So if I get it done in the morning, it works out so much better for me because then I've done my stuff, I've had a shower and then I can give to everybody else. I can give to my work and I can give to my children and I can give to my dog and take rather than thinking, well, I have an exercise today. I haven't done my thing. Mm-hmm. It's my one thing that means that I'm better at everything else. So I don't understand why I should feel guilty for it. And there was times when I did feel guilty for it when Ryan was much younger Um but I really don't think anyone should feel guilty for it because there's so many more benefits to me taking that time than not doing it. How do you how have you done it with um, your really uh, your younger one? So she's only just turned two. Yeah. So she's very young. She's very uh, very young. <laughs> how have you balanced that? Uh, um, so I think I've I've kind of kept the same in that it's the early mornings. Um, when she was first born, it was very tricky because obviously there's not so much of a routine. You don't really know when it's going to yeah. happen. Um, but I just took that slot of trying to before nine o'clock in the morning when she had her sleep or she was rested or she would be on the floor while I did a workout at home or um, just kind of some time that she was she was watching me do it. And it's even when they're really, really young, they kind of get, she got used to that routine really quickly. Mm. She, I swear she knew that like, okay, it's Monday morning. <laughs> Mummy's going to do half an hour of workout and she would just sit there and watch me. Mummy's got split squats today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and now she's older, it is different, but I can still get a workout in and her watch or the running buggy, or I do it when she's not 
there um, or my husband does breakfast and I go and do my workout. So it's always possible, but it's just seeing those different opportunities. Like often my husband does his workout when he's taken my son to a club. So here go to a football club and that's when Kev will go for his run. So it's trying to see those times mm. when you can use it where you're just sitting there doing nothing and killing time. Well, I don't ever do killing time. It's always filled with something yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. of gain. I swear that you started this um you started RNT two years ago, but together with your husband, both yeah. of you started at the same time, both of you overhauling a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, describe that experience in the household, like with, with just in terms of organization, it probably comes off the back of what I asked Ed earlier, yeah. but you're a practical example of that. Like what was the, what did you have to flip in your head to make this happen? So that all the, the wheels were turning, the, the <laughs> kids weren't being left at home, left <laughs> at school somewhere whilst you were in the gym. Like No, no. Yeah. I think, um, the first thing I think we did was we realized how we had to really plan, um, our schedule. Like we knew exactly what each one was doing at what time. What were we doing? Like shared calendars? We didn't like... We, yeah, we all, anyway, we already or... had like, we already had like a home calendar that both of us have. So we put in like... Digital you know, or... It, yeah, a digital one. Oh, yeah. So we'd have like a shared calendar that, so we all know, we know what each, each of us are doing, uh, you know, uh, yeah. trying to check before we add in any kind of extra socials or whatever. So we have that, but I think on a daily basis, um, yeah, so I took the morning slot for training, but it would go in the evening. And then I think a big thing was food because I don't know, like, especially in an Asian household, we would always cook every day. It was how it is. It's how I, my mom did it when I was growing up. So every evening my mom would make these elaborate meals. There'd be rice, there'd be dal, there'd be curry, there'd be like this huge thing. And I would take like an hour and a half every day prepping, like cooking. Wow. And also there is this mentality that cook should be fresh. Food should be fresh. Should be eat it, cook it today, needs to be eaten today. Can't be eaten tomorrow. Like, like as if, you know, it's going to get poisoned or something like that. Mm. I think Ed, it comes from the old days. Case, <laughs> yeah. He's in about eight days in a time. Yeah, if, it's, if, it's, if it's under 10 days, I think we're good to go. <laughs> Maybe 12 of it's been in the fridge, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it goes back to, and it's really hot back home, yeah. you know, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. think food goes bad or, you know, in India and things. But I was, I, the, the flipping the switch to actually do meal prepping was like I just couldn't believe how much time I got mm. in the evenings when I'm not sitting and chopping onions and you know <clears throat> kneading dough and all of that stuff is like and Bharat and I chose to pretty much eat the same things he had some meals that he would do that he pre he preferred and we had different but most of the time we were eating the same, exact same thing so you'd have different portions obviously and so we just I so we he decided we we would batch cook on Sundays. Sunday, we still do that. Sunday afternoons, he makes some things, I make some things. The fridge is stopped for the week. And I'm lucky. My kids are really amenable with food. They will eat pretty much what my, my, my seven-year-old lo loves, like a quinoa salad. Like he's not, they're not fussy eaters. They will eat anything. So we just end up, all of us end up eating the same thing. So I make like, they love their pasta. So we, I make like a huge bo bottle of pasta sauce. And then we have like the protein pasta. They have the whole wheat one. And, you know, it's just, so the, it's just, it's so simplified now. There's no elaborate meals. I'm not sitting there doing these crazy Indian, we do it on occasion, birthdays and stuff. Mm. You know, we make something special. It's not like we don't make any um, special food or anything, but it's becoming a one-off rather than an everyday thing. And that's really changed the way um, time is as well, I think. Do, do you guys meal prep? Yeah, I'm, I'm massive on it. So I, I meal prep my son as well, actually. And your son? Yeah, yeah. so uh, my son goes to nursery and within the, the package or whatever, we'll normally like give him a little bit of food depending on what time he's up in the morning. But then he's he goes off to nursery and they get fed every two hours. And it's, it's pretty decent food, to be fair. A load of fruit. Um I'm sure like just because the pressure from parents, they have to keep it healthy, but no, like, it's, it's good stuff. But then, so we, Monday to Friday, we only really have to do evening meal. Um, so I just batch cook, I batch cook for myself once a week. So I'll do all of my dinners. Um, and then lunch is probably for like about five days. So lunch is kind of a bit of a rotating one, but um, I'll then do his at the same time. So I'll do all of his dinners for the next week. Um, and then basically our fridge is like my Tupperwares, his Tupperwares. <laughs> and then each day we come back. So we'll, I get, we'll get back from nursery pickup at say 5.30. And then it's like the countdown's on because by the time you have like a tantrum here or there to get him into bed for like the aim seven, realistically, <laughs> hopefully it's by eight. It's like by the time you do bath and you do food, he wants to do a bit of play in. Like I said, maybe there's a tantrum and they're like, 
you 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 got to be on it from five thirty, and so the thought of like having to start making food and especially now with my daughter as well, it's like whereas one of us might have been able to do something while well, the other one's with him, but kind of like she's we're both kind of got a kid each, so um, there's no time to be yeah, making you know, all that kind of stuff. So I just pull out Tupperware, heat it up, bam, he, he's good to go. What does um, Suze have then? If you're making yours and your son's, what does she have? So we've gone through phases. <laughs> just of, just just about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how she stays in such good shape. She just, uh, <laughs> uh, no, so we, we go through phases. Sometimes we'll, I've prepped with, with us both, but then uh, maybe fair enough to her. She doesn't always want to do what I want to do in terms <laughs> of nutrition. I mean, I've seen your food. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not like the most adventurous, yeah, I think I could probably say. So, yeah, it depends. She she has a bit more variety in there, so sometimes... But we'll always eat together. Okay. Um, but quite often, like, the, the food might be different depending on what she feels so when like she that day. She will, she will normally do something in the evening that's quite, like, quick and, like, so she might have... Um, she might have, like, a salad or something, but sometimes she'll just have, like, yogurt or something. So it's, like, quick. Once, once they're in bed, she can make that within, like, five minutes or something. So... Uh, yeah, no, that it seems so her final meal of the day is like almost like a not like a snack, but it's like a it's a, yeah, depending on like how she's she'll prep is five, yeah, minutes. she'll sometimes have more of a main meal at lunch, or sometimes it'll be switched around. So hers is a little more flexible, but having mine and his already sorted also just gives that room in the kitchen, but also just in terms of that busy evening time to mm. to be yeah, to, to make it work. Um, and I think yeah, he ends up basically my son has the same thing for for six days in a row. But I'll then rotate it. And I know, like, you know, we're meant to give them lots of yeah. different things, but he's eating probably when you have all the snacks and the meals across nursery, he's eating like 90% of his food is is different, you know, every time to a point. Cause I think we all think we have loads of variety, but they just rotate the same days, don't they? Um, and so then I'll just rotate it each week for him. And so he won't see the same food again for a, another five or six what weeks. Make it? Um, so normally it'll be like some kind of protein source. Um, well, basically, his, his evening meal is normally like a few kind of courses almost. So like the main chunk of it, um, I'll do some kind of protein source, which I'll rotate through. Um, and then I'll basically make sure there's some veg in there. So the way my son's not like a huge fan of just eating. If, if I put a load of veg on his plate, you know, like him and all his mates at nursery all all um, kind of bonded together over their hatred of peas. And, you know, it's that kind of thing. So, I mean, I think like... I think when, from what I've kind of read and my thought on like trying to get veg into kids and stuff like this, you want them to see it on the plate so they learn it's part of their, um, part of like kind of a normal eating, but you also just want to get it inside their body so they can actually just have the benefit of it. So I don't think it's not the perfect way, but what I do is often I'll, I'll blend up a load of veg and I'll mix it into the sauce. So he'll have probably two portions of vegetables, um, but it's kind of like half, like kind of hidden basically. So there'll be sets so like beef mints i'll put like a, a pasta sauce like a bolognese sauce for it with all of this this veg then just stirred in and yeah he's not getting the benefit of seeing it but i'd almost just i'm kind of going for the easy win of just getting it into him for now and hopefully over time we can start to build up more of that stuff some foods are right like he likes his carrots but you know most days he'll end up if i just had it as veg as a separate thing um so yeah that's normally that and then quite often we'll have as a bit of a dessert like some greek yogurt with with honey and frozen berries he loves um, and then we'll normally do a bit of a platter kind of thing, um, which will have like a few different fruits, maybe some nuts or nut butter. And then normally there'll be kind of a bit more of a, a couple of like little cookies or a biscuit or something. Um, and I was quite, it was nice to hear actually on the, the parenting food podcast recently, she was yeah. kind of saying, if you put it all together and I think it was Sue's my wife's idea, but it's basically just, they're all on the, the plate together rather than having kind of things. So, um, yeah, that's how we do it. it. Seems seems to work quite well. I think we're also just, to be honest, just lucky. He's a pretty good eater. He eats a lot of in terms of volume, but also he's not that fussy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think implementing meal prep for myself has been a game changer for way beyond before I had kids. I think like if you don't meal prep, don't tell me you're busy. It's kind of what I always think in my head. <laughs> um, but factoring it into my son in a in a way that just you know still gives him bit more variety and you know introduces new foods to him but in a way that just makes life practically easier for us uh, has worked well in my house anyway amazing what about you charlie so it's probably the bit that I, I don't do that organised. So we don't meal prep. Um, and I think it's because my husband likes to cook. 
Um, so every week we plan our meals so we know exactly what we're having. Um, and then obviously the shopping's done on that so that we've only got that food in. Mm. Um, but he cooks most nights, so he does oh, the nice. cooking. Um, breakfast is always the same every day. Um, we all have exactly the same breakfast. Even the um, kids? Even the kids. Yeah, what yeah. is it? Uh, yogurt and fruit. Um, so yeah, everybody has the same um, breakfast standard. And then sometimes my son will have porridge as well and then have fruit yeah. um, just because he's going a bit longer um, and he likes porridge. So he <laughs> often has that. Um, lunches depends on who's in and who's not. Um, but yeah, dinners, it's probably, it's one of those things that I think about a lot and I think would that save us extra time? And yes, I think it probably would. Um but it's one of those things that we haven't given up yet because we both are foodies and we both quite like. So is that. it a different meal every day? Yeah. A different meal every week or is it? A, yeah. Oh, so every week is a different thing. All the time. Yeah. Oh, we wow. both enjoy so, so finding something different. And your husband different. just puts a lot of thought into so what he's I, shopping. What well, he's so cooking. often I'm the one that plans the meals and oh, he right. cooks it. <laughs> you just go on like good food recipes. and just... um, So yeah, so I'll see a recipe that I like okay, or yeah, something yeah. or um, I'll, we'll eat out somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll go, oh, I really like that. And then I'll find a recipe for it. Um, and we have a shared diary calendar on our phones so i'll just pop in five o'clock what dinner we're having the link to the oh, wow. recipe yeah, yeah. and um <laughs> it's very different <laughs> and here make it um yeah. that's so how probably... do you have got the ingredients was that was that you yeah so then i do the shopping so we do click and collect shopping yeah, which yeah. will get all the ingredients for so multiple that. shops a week or no one. one shop one shop a week so on a sunday yeah i'll do the so all these things the that make a massive difference that when you shop yeah, yeah, yeah. whether you're in delivery yeah. or like... so on a sunday i'll put it in for each day what we're going to have all the links to it and then i'll do the shopping on that basis of what oh, wow. it is um and then yeah m majority of the time he does the cooking and then you'll, in the all evening. Eat, you'll all eat the same thing yes okay. yeah sometimes we have to um take a step back for my son so he doesn't really like like a meal that's really saucy and everything's mixed in together so say we've got some um something we kind of keep a bit of it separate so it doesn't have the sauce on so he'll have like the pasta and he'll have whatever the protein sauces that we're having like he quite likes like chicken or salmon or something like that and then he'll have the vegetables he loves vegetables he's very good but if you mixed it all in in a sauce he wouldn't eat it but if you have it separate so he has it like deconstructed we always say <laughs> so here kind of as I'm cooking stuff or Kev's yeah, yeah. cooking stuff he'll put that out on the plate and just keep it less and um, then what about lunch are you is that all? Yeah, so lunch, um, either, like it's usually like quick. I'm a big fan of just literally like hummus and dipping and like eating like carrots, cucumber, peppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's probably my go-to lunch is just something like that. Vegetables and some kind of dip. Um, so it's really quick. It's like on the so go, really so. quick, yeah. yeah nothing yeah. that needs much prepping. Um, but I do... I often think, shall we try this meal prepping thing? But we haven't done yeah, it yet. Yeah. I don't I don't know why, because I'm really organized, as you all know. Like yeah. I'm quite organized in everything. But it's the only thing I haven't haven't tried. So maybe I will. I have thought about this, how it will look in a few years though, which is where you're kind of at, in that having been in the fitness industry since before kids. I think I've found ways that, that work great for me. I have no food focus. I've, I've finally now have, like, after a long time, like, have a good relationship with food and all these things. However, I don't, and I want my son to have the benefits, but without, I don't want him to have to be as into it as I am. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want him to have to feel like he's, you know, being as optimal or, or whatever these things are. And so I was definitely thought in my head is, like, how's this going to look in, in another five? Like, I want us to all sit around together and, you know, it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with what I'm doing, but it's just, I don't want him to feel like, I don't want to still be going out a different Tupperware from him in five years time. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I probably will move more towards that and become a little bit, maybe like more normal or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then, yeah, find a strategy that works like you obviously yeah. have, but probably, you know, at the moment I don't have my dinner with my son because he has it earlier. Whereas like when it's, he gets older, or yeah. not, you know have yeah. that time together so. and it is one of those things that i don't really want to eat my dinner at five o'clock mm -hmm. but i really want us all to eat together mm -hmm. so we all have to oh eat you together. eat all at five we all eat at five 
Yeah. Do you eat later on as well? No. Um, sometimes I'm like hungry, but yeah, the time yeah, it gets yeah. like half seven, I'm like a bit hungry. Yeah. Um, so I'll have something. Um, but I try not to because then I think, well, then I'm just adding in an extra meal. Um, so in an ideal world, I wouldn't be eating at five. Like six, half six would be my choice. Um, but I do love us all eating together. Yeah. Um, and my youngest is an amazing eater. Like, so you... Yeah, you could put anything in front of her and yeah. she will eat it. She was tucking into... I can imagine it being really nice. I mean, Sia's not really eating food right now, but sometimes if she's awake, we'll just put her next to us. Yeah. And it's nice as her like watching us yeah. eat breakfast together. It's, I do. I, I It's one of my favourite times in the day is us all having do you, do dinner you all together. Eat together. We all eat together, yeah. Same time. Yeah, I mean, my, my kids are a bit older, so we eat between 6 and 6.30. And how do your uh, meals look? Do they all eat the same thing? Yeah, most of the time. It was like so with slight differences, like if it's like, uh, but mo yeah, most of us eat. We end up eating the same thing. Like last night was like a classic like uh, protein noodles with like this tahini sauce that we make that I make, which the kids absolutely love. Different each day, or because you said you meal prep. Yeah, but meal prep. Is, is it meal prep in dinners or you meal prep in like the breakfast or lunch? Just dinners. We just, oh, you just meal prep dinners. Yeah, just meal prep because anyway, the kids when they're in school, they eat lunch. They eat lunches at school. Yeah, okay. So I pick, I pack them a little box to take that take into school. It's pretty much like a hummus yeah, wrap yeah. every day for them, which they quite enjoy. And yeah, so lunches of they is different because we the kids eat at school. So dinners is what we eat at home and. And dinner is what I meal prep on Sundays. So it's like I probably book, cook about three to four days worth. So Monday, Monday to Thursday is usually done. Friday evening, maybe, because I get my uh, my shop on Fridays. Yeah. So um, Friday evenings is when my shop comes in. So then up till, fri up till Thursday, everything is done. Then uh, Friday, Saturday, maybe is a bit more out of the box a little bit like the kids might want a pizza or something like that but um so that's maybe friday yeah. evening is one thing that we don't eat the same things but we all end up eating at the same time it's just well i think this is interesting because a, a lot of questions we get is when someone's going through a transformation they're like well will it what will it will it go back to normal hmm. like you know because there is a period you have to because you're changing your entire like what you're eating before wasn't working right yeah. so you have to change what you're eating but the question is like will i be able to eat normally with the family again yeah and I think it can be done, but it, it does take probably some steps there. I think when we were in fat loss, uh, when we were really like aggressively cutting back on stuff, then we weren't eating the same things. Like the kids were eating something different because um, especially for those seven, eight months when we were like really like going hard and being really watching yeah. the calories and, you know, weighing everything. Um, then the kids were definitely eating something different. But now, but both Bharat and my husband, both of us are in investment. We all eat, are all eating the same thing. We still weigh everything. Like we, I still know my 100 grams of rice and I still know my, you know, yeah. 150 grams of tofu. So we, are, I, we still, I still weigh it, especially I make sure that I weigh the things that I love. Because, you know, those are the things that you feel like. That's interesting. That's yeah. a good tip. Why are the things you love? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nut butter. 15 grams of nut butter is, is never like, 15 grams of nut butter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Charlie, do you, do you track your macros or calories or anything? Um, I go through stages. I go through stages. So um, it depends what I'm training for. Um, so mine all goes around training. Um, I've never really gone into a major fat loss phase or done anything yeah. like that it's on the list I know yeah um but it's always been around a fitness goal um and then I want to make sure that I'm getting enough of everything is yours is probably getting enough fuel right yeah. because of how much you're expending yeah yeah um because I can tell I can tell when I'm I'm not getting enough of something um because I either I'll pick up an injury or I just don't have the energy to do whatever it is or I'm just moody I'm like, oh, I'm mm. definitely, something's not, something's not right. So then I'll track for a few days and be like, oh yeah, no, it's because I changed this or, and I think you get into habits don't you where you do eat things for a period of time that you, you find these meals that mm -hmm. you quite like and you keep having the same ones. And if that's not quite hitting the nutritional spot and I haven't quite realized, um, sometimes that can be the case. So no, I don't track all the time though. How do you balance, um, motherhood with, your health fitness, but then also your work, because all of you place high priorities on your work as well. Uh, how do you find, how do you balance that struggle that well, ba that balance in your head? Because that's something I'm personally like still trying to figure out. I find Obviously it, it changes a lot, but yeah, I'm also always like torn between the three. I think mainly with for me, it's like the pull of working and business, and then the guilt of like not being there enough. <laughs> and then I'm also like, oh, I need you to train. 
and my training has definitely gone to number prior number three. Yeah. And I'm just doing as much as I can to keep me focused on a goal, but I know I could do more if I wanted, if I had the the capacity to, but that's always in my head still. And it's probably because I'm still new to it, but. I think it does change as seasoned. the ages of the kids. But I think the thing that works for us right now is small chunks of everything that I have to take out of my head that I'm going to work nine till five. Yeah. That just doesn't work. So I could potentially be working from five till seven and then get the kids to school and then be doing Liliana will be at nursery. Okay, that's my work slot. Then there's a small chunk of me. I'll go for a walk with Liliana when she comes back from nursery while she's sleeping. And then I'll have another slot of play. So then I'll be playing with Liliana. And then there'll be another slot of work. Then there'll be this, then there'll be that. And then after they've gone to bed, then another slot of work. Um, and it's probably, in some ways, I think it actually works better because then I never get fatigued or something. You never get that yeah. whole sitting there. When I used to have a nine to five job, I'm sure I didn't work eight hours. I'm sure that I couldn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah very um, few people actually do, right? Yeah, you can't. So um, that's what works for me right now is small blocks of a couple of hours yeah. on each activity. Um, and it seems to mean that I can cover myself in each area of mum exercise work mum exercise work that's sort of how i'm doing at the moment just like very scattered it yeah. seems to be quite scattered versus one chunk of time yeah um but you i know you're completely different you're one block and then it's well i've done i've mixed and matched quite a bit yeah. um because when all of the first came i was i was doing yeah like working and then it was, it was it was going back and forth and from what i've experienced i don't think it really matters what matters is one you've planned in advance because yeah. the whole trying to find time like you just don't you don't do you, you got to make it so it comes back to a whole planning thing but then it's just being ultra present with whatever you're doing yeah so like when i'm in the gym i'm not thinking about my clients and i'm not thinking about my kids unless i will some, sometimes maybe just draw on like for motivation potentially on that but i won't think of like a an issue with my son or anything like that i'm just i'm just doing my what i'm in there at work i know i trust and like the nursery so i don't worry about them at all i basically don't think about them I don't think about my own training. I'm just at work. And then when I'm with kids, it's, I don't really have my phone. I normally have my phone kind of in the vicinity, but I don't go on my phone. And this was something actually, um, I think when you've got like a newborn, they don't do that much. And so like you're feeding them or they're just sleeping on you or whatever it is. It's like, it's quite easy just to, to I, don't, I don't think it's like end of the world to doing that. But as my son starts to get a bit older, he kept like grabbing our phones. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, so like, why are we? And then so I've made like a conscious effort to try and like just not really be on it because you're not doing anything productive. It's the whole mindless scrolling, isn't it? Um, and you can enjoy being in the moment more, but also it just means that, yeah, you, really you have that, that quality. And I think probably since move working from home like moving to rmt you've got to and i'm sure anyone who's moved to like from office based or gym based or whatever to home work and you've then got to impart that on yourself in terms of like what you're focusing on when and the biggest thing that made the job more sustainable but also just me my life in general more sustainable was just being able to be present with what i was doing you've got 100 percent effort in that and then as soon as you're, that's done laptops closed you just move on and be 100 percent present with something else when do you plan is your is your are your weeks very repeatable or are they yeah do you spend time on like a sunday sitting there planning they're repeatable enough that i don't have to have a fixed slot to to replan but then say there's something out of the ordinary like say this i'll i'll have it planned but i for me it becomes now so automatic that it's like i don't know if something weird's happening on next tuesday one of my first things in my head is like, all right, that means Jim has to switch to here. And then like, mm -hmm. I don't really have to sit yeah, down and, and maybe that's just because I've been doing it for a while. Um, but yeah, I just, I would, I would sort of. you got like enough backup plans in place. Yeah, so, but one. I think if it doesn't come automatic, which I'm sure it didn't to me X yeah. amount of years ago. Yeah, you just got to just then spend five, 10 minutes. How can I fit this? Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes you can't fit everything in and that's where you need to know your priorities. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what gets cut? And so for me, it's not ideal, but if an extra thing gets added to my day, because there's no buffer now, it's like my walk will get cut. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not ideal. I find I try and do a quick walk after work and that's like a mental refresh. That really also helps with switching off from work back onto family. But some days it's just not possible. I have to start work later. So it shifts back into that time or whatever it is. Um, but for me, that's my least valuable part of the day. So it's just, that's what get cut. It's not ideal, but as long as you're aware of your priorities, you can then make sure you're focusing on, on the right. When you're, when you're moving from like things to things, how do you stay that? How do you keep that presence? So you're not 
always wondering, going, oh yeah, I've got to do that training. Because I've done week. it, because I know what I'm doing. So I don't have to think, oh, am I going to be able to have time to do whatever the next thing is? Because I know I'm in it and I know what's coming. So, so, you, so it's like a pre-plan and then it's yeah, like a flow. I know, yeah. I know what slots I've got where. I know when I'm, oh, in, okay. I'm with my daughter and this is just play and I won't pick my phone up and that's just that. So I don't have the... I don't have to worry that it's not going to be okay That because I've already done two hours before of that work or I've already done my workout first thing yeah, in yeah. the morning. So I think for me, it helps my brain to be able to switch off because I know that it's only, and also because the way I've got it at the moment, I know I'm going to come back to it because it's almost like a, a cycles loop. through that I'll have three slots in the day where I do work. So it's not, if I miss it on the first one, it doesn't matter, I'm going to catch it on the second one. If I haven't had time to do it on the first, it's okay. I've got another another slot to be able to to do it. So that's that works for me at the moment with my children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about you, Shreda? How, how's your like? Yeah, I was actually just thinking about how when we started uh, the R&T journey, Bharat and me, we didn't have a structure then. It was just very like... This is before. This before. Yeah. Yeah. It was everything sort of just, especially with lockdown, like most, both of us were working from home. Yeah. So it just meant that there were no borders. Like it was just so mm -hmm. porous. Like Wake up. Were, what do you fancy doing today? Yeah. It was just like things would just roll into, into one another and wasn't, wasn't just, wasn't very practical and wasn't very effective. Like, so there would be always like lots of fatigue. And remember like a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about um, residual attention. Like you sort mm. of have that thing, you sort of carry on what you were thinking about like, previously into that. And so you're not as effective. And then I realized that if I just knew that this is the slot, like uh, we like to call it time boxings. We just time box stuff. This is the stuff when we meal prep. This is the time when we were with the kids. This is the time when we get time for just about it to me, by, by our, just ourselves. So once we started, it was really like conscious at, at the beginning. Now it's less conscious. Now we sort of, it just sort of flows. But to get to that state where we were, where we now don't think about it, it took us really like, charting it out. We really made sure that these were the times that we would do this. And it was, if something like really crazy happened, like one of the kids was like really unwell and they couldn't go to school or, you know, there's something like then, of course, and we would have to discuss it and change things around. But initially those first six months, things were just so, so structured. And it also meant that we weren't thinking at six o'clock in the evening, oh, what am I going to eat? I'm hungry. Oh, you know, sod it. I'm just going <laughs> to eat this, you know, ice cream that's been sitting in the fridge. Like it's just because we knew exactly what was happening. We weren't worrying about making decisions when we were tired and, you know, frustrated. So that actually made a difference. Now I think it's less structured, but it's still, it's like, um, it's like, it's like a foundation that we've built mm -hmm. on now over the two years. When you go from nothing, you have to go to this more extreme to be able to pull back. And like, you know, we can talk about that with body fat, but even just with like, say, nutritional awareness, if you've been doing, you don't have a clue what you're eating, yeah. normally you're going to have to start tracking to actually get some awareness of like, okay, this is in this food or this is how many calories. Yeah. Once you've got that foundation, you can then pull back and be a bit more intuitive because you've just got that, as you said, perfectly like that foundation. That's the same with the time thing. Yeah. When you start, you almost have to go to the other end of the spectrum because it's so unnatural and you have to force yourself into these things. Then once you get into the rhythm of, all right, planning your week, so maybe you have to have initially that hour, probably doesn't even need to be an hour, but like 15 minutes on a Friday to block out everything. But once that's natural, you might not even need that because it's just happening more automatically, but you have to do the work to get there, mm -hmm. um, which I think is probably the scary thing at first. And it's what, like we said, will life go back to normal? Like it's not going back to how it was, but it can go a bit more yeah. normal once you've got, you've put that foundation in place. How are you finding it? Well, I'm, I'm actually learning a lot from you guys because you all got very <laughs> different, you all got very different experiences and def very different um, ways of approaching it. So I'm just sitting there absorbing and thinking, oh, that's, <laughs> that could be useful, that could be useful. I think the thing I need to work on most is um, the compartmentalizing the best. Okay. I think I'm still trying to figure out when do I do what best because every few weeks slight, things are slightly changing. Because initially I was doing a 6 a.m. walk and that was my sixth or seventh walk. Now suddenly she's not enjoying um, me taking her out at just before six to go for a walk because then she doesn't end up falling asleep properly. And the moment she seems to be sleeping from 5.30 to 7. So I don't want to disturb her. So now that previous walk is now out the window. So now I'm like, well, what do I do in that time now? So now recently I've been doing a bit of work then. I noticed that on Slack actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've been doing some work in the morning and then 
And then it's like, well, when do I finish that? Is that seven thirty? Do I finish? And then sometimes you'll wake up at seven. Sometimes you'll wake up at seven forty-five. So I still don't know that time. So sometimes I'll finish early. So there is this like trial and error at the moment that I'm I'm figuring out. Every few weeks it seems to be quite different. Um, so that's why I'm just listening to each of you and thinking, yeah, I can see where it might fall into rhythm. But maybe it might be useful to know, like, is it something that takes a bit of time? Like, is this very normal experience to have it quite changing in the beginning? And then it will settle into what you think lasts for a while. Yeah, I think until they're at school, it changes. Really? Yeah. Because then that's School when you... being what, five? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's when they're at that point yeah. when they're in, they're in a routine. You drop them off to school and they're there. Yeah. Um, and then they go and throw you off by being ill. But most of the time you're there. So until that point, like nursery, you do kind of get it, but they do pick up a lot of illnesses at nursery. Like I was like, yeah, Liliana's so healthy. I've done really, really well. And then you send them to nursery and you're like, oh, here we go. They're at home. And it's, it froze your day because you thought that, that you weren't going to have your child for four hours and actually you have. So I think it's ever changing until they're at school. The one thing I do know is that my deep work block is always nine till 12. Like mm -hmm. I, I try and do my most productive work then because that there's nothing that can really interfere with that. I don't do any training, avoid all meetings at that time. So that's like the one time I know I've, that I'll get my most important work done. I'll try and keep the meetings in the afternoon. I'll train at three. The rest of it's still like up for grabs a bit. Like I'm, I'm doing work in the evenings, like eight till nine sometimes, mm. sometimes a bit later, which I would have probably done normally four till five, but. I'm now doing it here. Like it's just, I'm just trying to like find where the best pockets of time are. I'm probably leaning more towards the way you do it, Charlie, in terms of like integrating the week and weekends are like sometimes it's not really weekends. They're just, it's just a blur. Like every day is sort of the same. Yeah. Um, yeah. And which then, I, I quite like, like yeah. for me that I get, I enjoy like just a little, a, a dose of deep work, a dose of training, a dose of each, yeah. each day. And more family things will fall on the weekends. Yeah. Regardless, that kind of so that forms just happens. Into your... Yeah. And that just even, and then, yeah. I mean, it's a great excuse for me. Like <laughs> having a baby is a great excuse for family members. So I'm leaving them early. <laughs> uh, this past weekend, I fell asleep at one and everyone was like, oh, he's a, he's a new dad. Yeah. <laughs> like, leave, leave him, leave, let him be. And Chani was sitting next to him. It's like, wake up. And I'm like, and, and her, someone said to her, no, nah, let him sleep. You know, he probably needs it. And I'm saying, like, she needs it way more than I do. Um, so yeah, it's just, for me, it's just the point where I'm, I'm listening to you guys saying, oh, it's all like things for the future. But right now I'm trying to figure out my own, um, the only thing, yeah. I think the biggest changes do happen in the first year, don't they? If you think back. So up until Sia being one, that's when it changes. It can change from one week to the next. Yeah. It does settle. But yeah, I'd say school is the point when you go, oh, okay, I yeah. can have a bit more structure in my days now. I think the other thing is I'm thinking more about like energy and time allocation more than ever. It's like I spend, I still spend time on a Sunday thinking about the weekend, like plan the week. And I think, well, what, what am I going to work on? And what are we going to do this week? Like, and I try and think a lot about that because, because the, the the ability to execute is probably less than I used to have. Not because of a lack of, less of ability, but just more just time. Like time is less, or and probably a bit of energy is not as high. So I can't go for as longer uh, as long as I maybe used to be able to. So like the the question of like what are we going to work on, and who am I going to do it with? Is like those are the big questions out every Sunday, every few days. Sometimes I'm asking myself just to make sure that. We're not like going in the wrong direction, but also I'm not wasting time because I can't think of anything worse right now than, than wasting time. Mm. So that's a big question. And that's probably why I'm also trying to realign my expectations with my training. So like I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll run the marathon this year. Maybe I'll do this, this another fight this year. And then I was like, you know what? It's not actually, it's possible, but it's not worth the trade-off. It would just require too much headspace. So I've settled for a half marathon, yeah. which doesn't require loads more mm -hmm. planning, just like basically just getting in one run, long run a week. Um, so I think these these questions are coming to me more and more. Anyway, to wrap up, uh, what's one thing you wish you knew uh, whenever you first had kids for health and fitness? For people who are, who've got young kids and wanting to start their journey, what's one thing you'd want to tell them that helped you a lot? I think just get going. ASAP. I think if you've, if you've already got kids, you know, like if you haven't got kids, do, do the work now because it's only going to be easier. If you can fix your relationship with food, you can get structure in your day, control your time, control your emotions better. It's going to put you in a better position when they do come. If you've already got them, like don't waste time. Like not only the sooner you start, the sooner you're going to get the benefits, but 
the sooner you go with down this more extreme approach, the sooner you can pull back to something that's more sustainable. Um, and so don't wait for things to get easier because, you know, I've, my, my, my son's only three and a half, so I've only got three and a half years of experience, but it doesn't get easier. Like, I'm sorry, if like, um, I know, I'm sure you guys are like, yeah, laughing, like, yeah, you think three and a half is bad, like, <laughs> but it's not going to get more because you think in the newborn stage, oh, like we've got like, you've got to do this feeding and that, like, there's no, like the emotional stuff hasn't come through yet. The person, like once they could walk, there's personality stuff involved, let alone once they hit like teenage, like this isn't going to get easier. So don't wait for this easy time to happen because whether it's kids or it's work or it's health or family or holidays, there's never going to be this perfect time. Get it done now. And the more, the sooner you can get more like further down this journey, the sooner you can start reaping the rewards of it and not just for yourself, but for, you know, for all of you involved. I think for me, if someone had said to me at the beginning to ask people to help. So by telling people, I want to run London Marathon and that means I need to do this, this and this and saying that to my family and friends. It's amazing how many of them wanted to help me. It's amazing how many of them offered to, oh, well, I just drop them off here and do that or I can have them here or I can do this or um, making me protein balls and things like that. Like really nice things because they knew what my goal was. So I think if I'd done that earlier with some of the other girls, I wouldn't have found them so hard because then it's kind of sharing them out. And it's not just my husband. It was everybody. Everybody kind of helps. I think if you make it clear, I really want to do that. And probably your goal will help all of those people anyway. But like if it is health and fitness, you being healthier, fitter and happier is ultimately benefiting all of them anyway. So they're helping themselves by helping you. Um, but I would always never want to ask for any help. I was like, oh no, it's because it's for me. I want to go for that run or I want to do this. Um, but now I think by sharing it and getting people on board massively helps. It definitely helped me. Trevor? I think for me, it would be realizing how you shouldn't just rely on feeling tired. Like I'd be like, oh, I'm just too tired. I just can't be bothered. I'm just too mm. tired. And how much it actually doing something gives you energy. Like actually going to get, you know, going to the gym and actually taking those steps, actually eating healthier, taking that effort, fills your energy cup, doesn't drain it. But I, you know, you know this, but when you experience it, you realize, oh mm. my God, I didn't sleep. Like so many times I'd be like, oh, I woke up like four times last night. There's no way I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to go for my run. But I've there's never been a time when I've regretted not getting up and going for that run or not getting up and going for a workout or not going up and getting getting up and going for that walk. Most of the time I've regretted the lion because getting up and going for that walk, even if you've had a really rubbish night, actually helps you get through the rest of the day rather than that extra half an hour of feeling lying in bed and then being like, oh, actually, maybe I should have gone. And that actually drains you more. And that I think was just such a light bulb for me. It's just like, I don't care how bad my night went. I'm going to get up and do this because I'm actually going to feel better for doing it. I'm going to be doing 4 a.m. runs tomorrow, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be telling you guys, well, I don't think I've got the time for these running. <laughs> I think my thing, just closing sentiment, would be um, the power of role modeling. Like you guys just mentioned it. And I think I've seen it in just different areas. And I know myself, I've modeled behaviors off my own parents positive some potentially i wouldn't want to emulate but i think there's so much um there's so much to role modeling and the fact that your your pet your kids will model what you do and something i think of a lot at the moment is like if i if i've got a bad habit i ask myself like would i want sia to have this mm. and that really helps me sort of think about doing that twice or um trying to work on improving it so for me personally that's something that i think of a lot going forwards in other areas, not just health and fitness. So for other parents who are thinking about starting this journey, I think it's an, it's an amazing opportunity to help set your kids up for a life of exercise, healthy nutrition, and ultimately helping them unlock their potential. Mm -hmm.